Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so did I have Lee Murphy on the line, and he's founder and CEO of Inspira Health. Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Glad to be here. All right, Lee. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we'll really be addressing, you know, individuals that have five or more chronic health conditions. And uh, as I was prepping for this interview and doing my research, I mean, I've done hundreds of interviews in the uh, in the healthcare sector in various um, areas, but I've never come across this topic. So I was I'm genuinely really interested to get into it and to bring that to the audience and to also just shed light to maybe some of the people out there that are that are going through some of these. Um, conditions, just let them know, like, they're not alone. Like there's a population of people out there just like yourself. So um, I'm excited to get into all of this, Lee. But before we do, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Lee, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives and experts. That's our mission. Lee, what mission matters to you? The mission that matters to me Adam, is aligning with my values. And so three of my top values are compassion, positivity, and accountability. Mm -hmm. And so I founded Inspira Health with the focus on helping people that are often really struggling, those with five or more simultaneous lifelong chronic conditions. Mm -hmm. Inspira Health believes in the human capacity for change. And to be able to change, you've got to be able to envision a future with, with improved health and then one that allows you to a, a pathway to get to that different future. Mm -hmm. So over 30 years ago, I committed to spend the rest of my life continually deepening my capacity to both love and serve. And by serve, I mean making the planet a better place for my having been on it. And Inspira Health embodies this commitment. Our approach brings compassion first. We create a space where mm -hmm. people can be seen as unique, special, and whole individuals. They're not a combination of their various conditions like they experience so often in the healthcare mm -hmm. system. We want to know who they are. We want to know what's important to them, what we can do to fan the flames of hope for improved health and a better future. Mm -hmm. After th that trust building, we use a team approach. We center on in-person interactions to help bring that envisioned improved health to reality. Mm -hmm. Our focus is life behavior changes, how mm -hmm. somebody eats, how they sleep, how they move, how they manage their health and how they understand their conditions. Mm -hmm. If you address those aspects and support mental health and address social needs, it's guaranteed to improve the health, if not totally transform the health. You mm. still have your conditions. You still have to live your life within the constraints of these, but your conditions do not have you. And that's a big mm. shift. If you move from a life that's constantly reactive and mm. seemingly ever more restrictive to one that supports flourishing, that change is transformational. Oh, this this transformational change that that's possible in the, in the quality of life. I mean, it's uh, it's a big topic, and uh, and I want to go further into this. I mean, but before we do that, I'd like to maybe just take a step back. I know you said over, you know, many years ago you founded mm -hmm. and you were on this path. Like, like where did all this begin? Like, where if if there was a point or it was a, a progression? Like, how did you know that this was going to be your your thing or your mission? Well, you don't start out thinking. I, I want to help people with five or more chronic conditions. You know, I think it started out for me. I started working in a, in a family business and mm -hmm. we we're a boutique employee benefits consulting firm. And we started looking at data. We were in the business right when claims payment got computerized. And mm -hmm. so we started to be able to look at data. And what we saw in the data was there's a very small percentage of the people account for a big percentage of the costs mm -hmm. and nobody was figuring out how to address that group. And so we, probably spent 10, 15 years looking at that group, trying to figure out what to do. Um, and what we came, where this whole business came out of was, mm. if you break that small group into three components, I'll call them um, tragedies, which are people that have uh, usually a single diagnosis that mm. can be catastrophic for their life, uh, accidents, um, and then people with multiple chronic conditions. The thing that makes the people with multiple chronic conditions unique mm -hmm. is if I look at your data today, I can tell you who's going to be in that group five years from now. I cannot wow. tell you who's going to be a trauma or a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And so if I can identify this group, then the question becomes, can you build a program to help them change their lives? And so that's how we got into it. 
Wow, what an, what an interesting um, thing that the data, it, you, you can see what's going to happen five years mm -hmm. in advance for a certain percentage of the population. Like that's extremely interesting, but it also, it, it like if you're starting any type of business, right? Like mm -hmm. if you have a problem out there that you're looking to address, I mean, in my opinion, this is the right way to go about it. Mm -hmm. So you're going out there and addressing, you, you see the need, you see the population, and then you're, you're going out to address and fix that problem and serve that need. So I think, I mean, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I guess where my mind, even when I was, kind of going through everything um for this interview like where does the number what does the five come from like is that a specific number based on looking at the data or where does the five come from so we ended up at five for a couple of reasons um mm -hmm. one is that if you look at uh large amounts of data mm -hmm. the inflection point in in looking at claims happens between three and four with every additional condition the average cost goes up that's mm -hmm. not a surprise, but that jump gets big between three and four. And that mm -hmm. happens in every data set that we look at. And so if I'm looking just at claims data, I would say that the, the actual number is four on just data. I've never had somebody come into our program that had four conditions that showed mm -hmm. up in claims data that didn't have two or three more. The actual number average for the groups that we're working with is probably seven. We talk about it as five mm. because that's that that's a that's a jumping off point. And it's a mm. point by where that cost gets really expensive. It also there, makes it sorry, it also makes us unique. There nobody mm. else wants to deal with this population. Mm. Going a little bit further into the idea of the population. So we know conditions are the let's just say the the barrier to entry, right? The mm -hmm. five chronic. Um, are there other similarities that you find when kind of looking at how to help this population, whether it's socioeconomic status or I don't know, like just in general, are there any other similarities? So besides the, the five conditions and our conditions aren't just any conditions, they're conditions that can be impacted by lifestyle change. The other piece is such as such as maybe just a, um, obesity, hypertension, chronic joint pain, diabetes, asthma. So mm -hmm. things that if you change how you move, how you eat, how you sleep and manage your stress, all mm -hmm. of them get better. We include mental health conditions, but the real thing that's similar is that, you know, 75% of the population that come into our program mm -hmm. um, are appropriate for mental health counseling. They could use some additional support. And that's not mm -hmm. a surprise because if you've got five chronic conditions, you've probably been living with at least three of them for mm -hmm. one to two decades. Wow. And so picture somebody, you know, and so your life, you know, isn't what you'd like it to be. Your life is a struggle. You don't feel like you have control in a lot of areas. And over time, it can really wear you down. And our healthcare system mm -hmm. is fantastic in so many ways. But in helping people with chronic conditions or multiple chronic conditions, that, that what they really need is lifestyle change, that's not the strength of our system. Mm. And so it's a progression, though. You said this is like yes. decades. So when I put myself maybe in the shoes of some of these individuals, it's like, okay, something happens in there. And maybe not to put a, an age on it, but maybe their 20s. And then it, mm -hmm. it carries over to their 30s. There's another something that develops. And maybe into their 30s, they now one or two more um, develop for, for whatever reason. Obviously, different people, different situations. But mm -hmm. if you look at it, like, you know, over decades of this and this pile up, like that's got to bog down on somebody. Like that's got to be pretty defeating. I mean, just to, yes. just to wake up and just to go about your day and like your normal thing, you're like, okay, now this comes up and it's adding to these mm -hmm other issues maybe that I have. It sounds to me like, I mean, it, it adds up. It absolutely adds up. And once you have a couple of conditions, the chance of you getting another one is greater than mm -hmm. the chance of somebody getting their first one. Oh, and so, so it kind of it, maybe spirals it, it, as well. It, it's a positive feedback loop. It's very, mm -hmm. very difficult. Yes. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, so now, um, okay, so we, we've established, mm -hmm. you know, some, some of the conditions, right, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. so whether it's, um, whether it's um, to go back to it, maybe mental, there's some, some mental issues there, mm -hmm. there could be, um, you know, as you mentioned, uh, obesity, diabetes, mm -hmm. like a lot of different other things, specifically for the ones that, that uh, Inspire Health is, is working with, among mm -hmm. a bunch of others. Um, you've also established that this doesn't happen overnight, like possibly, mm -hmm. like you, somebody doesn't just necessarily wake up and all of a sudden have five conditions. Like this mm -hmm. is a, a progression. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and also now at this point, the person is possibly not not feeling so well. They've been dealing with something for decades. Mm -hmm. So now, I guess taking it a step further, 
um, somebody comes maybe uh, on the radar of mm-hmm. Inspire Health or, or their employer or something else, like, like where does that part of their journey begin to just maybe understand that there's even some help for them and for this particular yeah. population? So the journey for the individual mm-hmm. starts with the employer contracting with us because we really become part of their health plan. Yeah. And so where their, where their journey to us typically begins is they'll get an invitation in the mail. Mm-hmm. We will have we will have uh, secure access to claims data, mm-hmm. and we will identify people. You know, and I, like I mentioned before, we can tell you five years from now who's going to be in that group because they're in the group now. You don't leave once you're in this group. Um, can you and- give me? Can you give me maybe an, like a little bit more on that? Just a little bit more. So somebody comes into the group, like maybe an example or something like that of where you know. Yeah. So somebody. So we'll invite somebody in the program. So say they've got. Mm-hmm. Uh, morbid obesity, diabetes, hypertension, joint pain, anxiety. Yeah. We'll send them an invitation. Now, it's not unusual that we'll send an invitation and people will ignore it because the, the hardest part of our program is having our invitation show up when somebody's ready for change. Mm-hmm. So it's not unusual where somebody will, when they respond to the invitation, will say, you know, I've gotten three invitations yeah. over the last two years from your organization. And, and yesterday... I was in the store um, and I bent down to get a new pair of jeans and it was on the bottom shelf. Mm. And as I bent down, I lost my balance and I, 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 I fell. Wow. And I realized that when I was on the ground, I didn't know if I could get up. Mm. And it was mortifying to me to find myself in that position. Mm-hmm. And I thought when I got, when I did get up and I got to my car, I said, you know what, that invitation yeah. I got yesterday, I'm going to call. And so it's really about, you know, it, it's really magic, if you will, or luck that the invitation hits when somebody's ready for change. And that that's, example, by the way, that example you gave, that's very understandable. Like mm-hmm. if you're putting yourself in their shoes, it's like, because even just that idea, maybe sometimes of hope, right? Like it's mm-hmm. hard to put your hope in, into something when you've been living a certain way for decades or, or grappling with different things and it's, and it's compounded. So if there's a, um, you know, obviously the good thing is, is that Inspira helps, uh, I guess we all have to be sold, right? Everybody's vying for eyeballs. Yes. So whether it's helping yourself whether it's buying a new shirt whether mm-hmm. it's whatever like we all have to be sold attention is something that's important so let's just say uh for lack of better words in my media marketing campaign a, a drip campaign right mm-hmm. <laughs> to uh to continue to you know spread love in this mm-hmm. case on on the uh, individuals that you want to help um i just think it's great and and sometimes just like a i guess just a juxtapose business and this sometimes mm-hmm. just like your marketing effort and you find the right client it's kind of mm-hmm. the same thing obviously just another product you're you, dealing with their life and you, something you, and trying to really help you've got to get them when they're ready so once yeah. a, once we've got a program in place mm-hmm. some of the ways that it spreads is people tell each other yeah and 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 so then they'll call and say hey do i you know can i get in and you know you've got to qualify mm-hmm. but if you qualify then yes and if you're ready to change then absolutely mm-hmm. Uh, I maybe let's pause here for a second. And I know we've talked, we've talked around a little bit around Inspire Health and, and people mm-hmm. know what, what's going on, but like directly, like tell us exactly what Inspire Health does. Our program yeah. works only with this population, people with five or more chronic conditions. And so when you come into our program, you're going to start by taking an online intake, but then you're going to meet with a health improvement coach and you're going to meet with that person for an hour to 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you finish that, you're going to then go meet with a behavioral clinician, and that's going to be another hour intake assessment program. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing there first is we're trying to establish trust. What mm-hmm. we're trying to figure out is who are you? What's important to you? What's your vision for health in the future? What's worked mm-hmm. in the past? What are the barriers? And, and how much capacity do you have to engage with change now? Because everybody's capacity is different. If people have lots of chronic conditions and their system's fairly fragile or they're working two jobs or they've got kids at home and they're a single parent, your capacity changes. So our programs, I could have people with those same five conditions that I wrote off before as an example. And our approach with three different people will look completely different. It has little to do with the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It has everything to do with how much time they have, how ready are they for change, Mm -hmm. where's their mental health, and what are their social needs? You know, are they struggling to put food on the table Mm -hmm. and there's, there's a level of food insecurity there, you know, or do they have some good support at home and Mm -hmm. do they have the bandwidth to be able to do a couple of changes? 
Yeah, it's great. And so the, the point I, I like to kind of elaborate on here is it's customized because you want to affect real mm -hmm. change. It's not saying you just go through this and these are the boxes we have to no. check, right? It's, it's saying we want to change. So you have to meet the patient it, where they're at. If the population was less vulnerable, you could you could have impact with a great app. There's a lot of companies out there that focus on one condition, sometimes two. They've got a great app. They include a little bit of coaching with it. Our change happens because of one-on-one -on -one interaction, people mm -hmm. helping people. And so we are virtual. We use you know we use the Zoom platform, mm -hmm. but you're going to get typically an hour a week with somebody, and it's a team that helps you. Somebody's helping you with your overall plan. Somebody's helping you with nutrition. Somebody's helping you with fitness. Mm -hmm. Somebody's helping you with your mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and if there are other, if you need financial support, we're connecting you with financial support. Mm -hmm. um, that's where that change happens with this population. You're, mm -hmm. You can't do it with text messages and emails. You've got to hear where they're at. And, and I've got to walk with them long enough. I can't do this in six months. This mm -hmm. takes 15 months to 20 months because they have to start the change. Mm -hmm. They have to fall off the change because life happens. Mm -hmm. Stress is going to happen. We've all tried to change how we eat or we tried to change. We want to work out more yeah. and it all works great for a while. And then something happens and then we're not sleeping as good. We're not eating as good. We're not doing the change in our workout. And what we want to do is be with them when that happens. So then we remind them when you envisioned your healthy future, is that still important to you? And it's never about, I want to lose more weight or I want to have less pain. It's always about, I want to be alive and dance at my granddaughter's wedding. I want to be able to get down on the floor and play with my kids. It always is about something bigger than the self that becomes the motivating factor. And we teach them how to continually connect to that. And that mm -hmm. creates resilience. Oh, it's, it's a great story. Um, and I, I know we've spent quite a bit of time um, talking about this from the patients. And mm -hmm. um, I'd like to maybe switch focus a little bit and, and start talking about a little bit more from the employers and um, a lot of business owners, a lot of executives, entrepreneurs um, that watch this. And, and obviously, um, you know, everything that we set up to this point, uh, people I feel that are in these leadership positions, they want to help their employees. Mm -hmm. They want to do this because not, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because that also improves the quality of their their organization and retention. I mean, we're at a we're in a so called so called a war for talent right now mm -hmm. when we're recording this. So a lot of benefits to 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 putting the employee first, of course. So mm -hmm. aside from that, though, um, like take me a little bit further down um, if, as if as an employer is looking at this mm -hmm. and they're thinking about like maybe some of the reasons that they should be doing this. Is there maybe some financial background on this as well? Sure. So, um, actually, our program will will get two. I'll say two kinds of outcomes. There's more than that, but two that that employers like to quantify. Mm -hmm. One is we can show health improvement, and we will guarantee at least a thirty percent health improvement, and that's across eleven different metrics that are fully transparent and auditable. And we will show a reduction in healthcare spend looking at the spend before you're in our program compared to the spend after, we'll also guarantee a 30% reduction. And so there is a financial piece to it, but more importantly, I think it's the impact that's going to have on the workers comp, on the disability, on the productivity, um, and on the ability of that person to engage, not just in the workplace, but in the rest of the community and with their family. And so there is a, you know, for the right employer, for an employer whose mm -hmm. culture and whose their own mission is about really valuing employees and bringing resources mm -hmm. to help employees, our program is a great fit. Mm -hmm. You need to be self-insured, so you have to be an organization of a certain size, mm -hmm. um, and you need to have a, a longer-term approach. This is not, I cannot work with uh, somebody with five or more chronic conditions and tell you, oh, we can turn them around in, in 60 days or in six months. Not realistic. Hours. This took no. decades. This took no. decades. So it, it, even it took two, ten even to two, two to three decades to get here. You've yeah. got you've got to give them 18 months, mm -hmm. you know, to two years to to turn it around. And we can do that. Wow. It's amazing. It's, it's an amazing success story. And it, it's good to know that um, that individuals like this have help, number one, because mm -hmm. maybe that they're not aware. And maybe the, some of the employers mm -hmm. that are watching this were also not aware. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's amazing. Um, you mentioned, I want to maybe get into the weeds a little bit about this, sure. about what kind of um, employers typically get the most value. So you said maybe self-insured. Is there like an employee count? Like, give us a feel for that. Because at the end of this, like, we, mm -hmm. I still have a bunch of questions to ask you. But at the end of this, I definitely want to, um, you know, leave contact information, stuff sure. like that. We'll put in the show notes. So tell us a little bit more about that. So typically, mm -hmm. I would say an employer with a thousand employees or more, mm -hmm. unless that employee 
employer is self-insured and they're smaller, um, and they're not as interested in a specific guaranteed outcome, but what they're interested in is helping their employees. Mm -hmm. We need at least a thousand people in there so that we have enough in our program that I can uh, guarantee our impact. And I know if I can get 15 or 20 people in the program, I have no problem making that guarantee. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be an employer that's got a good relationship with their employees. And quite honestly, people that are willing to take a two-year approach typically mm -hmm. understand and value their employees differently. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a union environment, you've got to be able to include them and 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 bring them on board. We we've we've worked with 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 employers with unions in the past, and we can do that. And we're really industry agnostic. And where in the past, I don't know if I'd call it a barrier, but where it was a little bit of a challenge because we use the Zoom platform. We've been on Zoom for seven years. We used to have to spend an, half an hour to an hour with every new participant coming in, just yeah. going through how you do that. Today, we don't spend any time on that because of the pandemic. Everybody, unfortunately, knows how to use Zoom. Yeah, it's uh, interesting how that connectivity works mm -hmm. and how it, how it has worked. And, you know, um, going a little. OK, so now thank you for, by the way, shedding mm -hmm. light on the employer side of mm -hmm. things, because I mean, I, I like to get into that because there, I believe that they're, you know, the numbers make sense on the back end and, and why the right employers, it can make a lot of sense mm -hmm. um, to use Inspiral Health and, and that type of solution. But getting back to maybe the the um, the patient side of things. Mm -hmm. Like, what are some of the some of the outcomes that I know you've been doing this a long time, work with a mm -hmm. lot of populations, but I want to kind of put some, shed some light on this. What are some of the outcomes okay. that you've seen um, in your experience? Sure. So we've been doing this a little over twenty years. Yeah. And so some of the things that um, that stand out that most organizations aren't able to deal with is we had a person in our program. This goes back a few years. Mm -hmm. um, that was really struggling and we couldn't mm -hmm. figure out why they weren't able to, to, to do anything. And what we, we finally, what they, what they finally shared was, well, they're, they're not sleeping mm -hmm. well, and they're not sleeping well because their husband can't sleep in the bed. So he's sleeping in a recliner because of his back. And the wife was the person in our program and she's sleeping on the floor next to her husband oh. because she doesn't want him to be alone. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're not sleeping well is because the mattress is so bad that they gave the mattress that they had to their daughter so that their daughter and grandchild could could have a good place to sleep. And we looked at that and went, oh, I, we can solve this. Yeah. We, we will buy them a mattress. Mm -hmm. And you think about, you know, uh, health, health plans aren't used to thinking this way. Yeah. But you buy them a mattress and all of a sudden, and, and, and she reached back to our coach uh, literally the next day after the mattress was put in, and she said, I woke up and it was daylight. That hasn't happened in over eight years. Eight um, years. Hold and on. So, eight years. Yeah, eight years. And so you think, so you think of the change that Man. that mattress is going to bring when now you can get some sleep and now you're not completely chronically exhausted, your health is going to change. And yeah. so you, you, you're able to do things like that. Um, you know, I've got another example of a, a, a woman who came into our program and if you'd have said, okay, what are the, uh, red flag issues. What are the issues that this person has to address? They had a lot of them in their mm. care, the care that they weren't dealing with. But as we talked to this person, what we found was, all right, their primary source of calories was the break room at work because they didn't have um, enough money mm. for food. Yeah. Um, and they were dealing with lots of trauma. And so, you know, the typical approach would be, okay, well, let's get you to close these care gaps and we need to get you into counseling. And the person said, we don't do counseling. And I went to I, not me, my team went, okay. And so we pivoted. We, we, we changed completely. We, and what she said is the most important thing for me right now is my medical debt. And it was like, mm -hmm. okay. So we spent the first four months working with her, with uh, one of our resources to build a plan to handle her debt. They put that plan together and she went, okay, you people are real. What, wow. do, you, what do you want me to do? And so she still wouldn't do the counseling, but mm -hmm. we got her to, and she changed how she ate. She lost 75 pounds. Her son who lived with her lost 50. He wasn't in the program or, 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 you know, he worked for somebody else, but just that change. And she totally transformed her life. Now she's still got a ways to go, mm -hmm. but her comment upon exiting to our coach was when I came into this program, you cared more about my health than I care about it. I am leaving this program and I care more about my health than anybody else. <laughs> And that's why we're in this business, Adam. 
Oh my gosh. I have chills over here. Like that's when we talk about transformation, like that's, that's transformation. Like I can't even imagine like not, not seeing, not being able to sleep really for eight years to have a good, a good night's sleep. I mean, um, or, or some of the other things that you mentioned in terms Mm -hmm. of like where you're getting your calories, other things like this. And, and then I guess this also is a testament to what you mentioned earlier about really meeting the individual Mm -hmm. where they're at, meeting the employee where they're at and not, you know, enforcing this regimen. And and Mm -hmm. so by building that trust, you know, it leads to that change. Like, it seems like that's the pattern. It, it, it absolutely is. You've, you've got to build that trust. And the, the thing that I love about our program, and we, we, you know, we've got hundreds of individual stories. The ones that I really like are the ones that are multi-generational is because if you change somebody's health in a system and, and that whole system, they tend to share habits. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen it where we're working with uh, the employee who's a participant Mm -hmm. in our program. And what ends up happening is it changes their life. It helps them deal with their adult children differently and set boundaries differently because they're in counseling. It changes the adult children's life. Mm -hmm. And then the grandchild who's struggling in school and is a behavior issue, all of a sudden that gets corrected. And so you think about the reverberations that Mm -hmm. that has in a community. And that's why when I get up in the morning, I love what I do. Oh man, I I love bringing this to my audience. It's a, it's a great story and I see it. And for the people that are watching this, that are on the employer side um, and, and are that those decision-making you know, uh, capabilities and Mm -hmm. positions, um, it's something to definitely consider Mm because this population is definitely underserved. Mm -hmm. Um, And then obviously for the, for the, let's just say, maybe some people are watching this that are, that have gotten some of that mail Mm -hmm. from uh, Inspire Health and they haven't responded. Maybe this will help to be the catalyst Mm -hmm. to let them know that there's there's hope and that there is maybe there's a way to to improve your quality of life Mm -hmm. and you don't have to necessarily go through um all the things that you are and that and that there's somebody out there that understands that you know you didn't you didn't choose necessarily this or that you didn't wake up one day with Mm -hmm. five plus conditions like this was a Mm -hmm. progression over decades and there were many things that led up to Mm -hmm. this and just to let you know that there could be a solution out there so i think it's amazing um, so Lee, I just have to ask, I, I, I know a lot, mm-hmm. lots on your plate and I know you're mm-hmm. very passionate about your mission and what you're doing. Um, so what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for Inspire Health? You know, what's next for us is continuing to try to get the message out is continuing mm-hmm. to try to let people know, first of all, this population tends to be invisible. Mm-hmm. Employers aren't used to running reports that said who has five or more conditions. So you're saying, how many diabetics do I have? How many people with musculoskeletal issues do I have? How many people do I have that are struggling with weight? What they're not used to doing is seeing how many people have five or more. And if there's mm-hmm. any message that I'd like to to help people understand is start to look at this population Mm -hmm. because if you can see this population, it's going to then create a need that you say, we have to do something. Mm -hmm. This is, they're not just vulnerable because they've got five or more conditions. Mm -hmm. When you look at population health, um, it, there's also a direct relationship between levels of income and the, and the prevalence of people with five or more conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, There's, there's relationships between race and people with five or more conditions. And if you are really committed Mm -hmm to trying to support vulnerable populations, however you define it, Mm -hmm. this kind of a program is a way that you can actually provide action that's more than lip service that Mm -hmm. says we care and we'd like to help. Well said. So Lee, if, uh, if somebody's watching this and mm-hmm. they want to follow up and they want to start, you know, exploring what it looks like to work with Inspire Health, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? You know, best way is probably to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, reference that you saw the mission matters um, so that I can make that connection and, 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 and make sure to respond right away. But that's the, that's the best way to reach out and, and have, an, have another conversation. Yeah. Absolutely welcome that. It's great. Um, and, and to the audience, we'll put um, we'll put the the links and all that good stuff in uh, in the profile and in, in the show notes so that you can just click on it and uh, head right on over and make that connection. Also, check out the website. So we'll definitely do that. And uh, if this is your first time, by the way, speaking to the audience, uh, tuning in to Mission Matters or engaging with our platform, just to let you know, um, we're all about bringing on experts and entrepreneurs and executives and having them share their mission, like what gets them up in the morning, 
because I'm really fired up to go out there and to make a difference in the world. Um, if that's the type of content that you're into and it excites you, then uh, we welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And, and Lee, uh, it really was truly a, a pleasure getting to know more about yourself, your background, and of course, this amazing population that you're helping through in Spiro Health. So thank you again for coming on the show. Oh, thank you, Adam. I really enjoyed this.